your heads one moment. Heavenly Father, we thank you because this is the day that you have made. We shall rejoice and be glad therein. The day has been declared open. Lord, as we go into your word right now, meet each one of us at the very point of our needs. Father, send your word again. And let your name be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let somebody shout it louder. Amen. Amen. Please, you may be seated. Praise God. I said, praise God. This morning, I especially welcome you in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I want to especially appreciate God for the privilege I have to stand here this morning and share the word of God with us. And I believe that that which God has in store for each one of us shall be practically delivered in Jesus' name. Somebody who is set for double portion, let me hear you shout it loud, double portion. I'd like you to please open your Bibles as we read this morning as our text to short scriptures as we begin to examine the subject before us this morning the first scripture is taken from second corinthians chapter 8 and we read verse 7 second corinthians chapter 8 and verse 7 everybody let's read together one two go As he abound in everything and in diligence. So, God's word commands us to abound in diligence. Second scripture is Joshua chapter 18 and verse 3. Joshua chapter 18 and verse 3. Everybody, let's read together again. One, two, go. Said unto the children of Israel. How long are ye slack to go to possess the land? How long are ye slack to go and possess the land? This morning we are taking a look at one of the prominent components of the Spirit of God that is evidently at work in this commission and at work in the life of the visionary, God's servant, Bishop David Oyedepo. Remember at the opening we were told clearly, we need a good understanding of what is available and what is obtainable upon this mountain because when we are talking about double portion we need to understand double portion of what and so this morning we shall be examining briefly the spirit of diligence the spirit of diligence can you say that with me, everyone louder yet the loudest you can. The spirit of diligence. That opening scripture tells us to abound in diligence. And then the children of Israel were told in Joshua 18, if you are slack, in other words, if you are not diligent, your possessions will slip out of your hands. God has given 
But you and I must be diligent to be able to lay hold on and receive that which God has given. Upon this mountain of Shiloh 2012, God has given you double portion. May you receive the spirit of diligence to be able to go forth and take hold of it. Your portion, no other will take in the name of Jesus Christ. I said your portion, no other will take in the name of Jesus Christ. Evidently, without any doubt, the spirit of diligence is at work in this commission. Evidently, the spirit of diligence is at work in the life of his servant. I'm sure many of us must have heard God's servant, Bishop Boyede could say several times over and again. I am not surprised that we are where we are. I would have been surprised if we are not here. Why? Because God is the doer of all these good and mighty things. Yes, but the spirit of diligence must be put to work to be able to lay hold on God's possessions for our lives. We are all aware of the fact and we have heard him relay to us the mandate as God delivered it to him May 1st and 2nd, 1981. How many of us still remember the mandate? Can I see your hands up? The hour has come to liberate the world from all oppressions of the world, of the devil, through the preaching of the word of faith. And I am sending you to undertake this task. Can I hear a loud amen? God delivered to him the mandate first to second of May 1981. And shortly after that, within few days, the powerhouse was set up. How many of you have heard him talk about the powerhouse before? Can I see your hands up? Wave it to the Lord. Say thank you, Jesus. The powerhouse was set up where we had people praying and fasting concerning the commission and the ministry every blessed day. And shortly, few days after he received the vision and received the mandate, the weekly hour fellowship called Faith Leap began within the same month. What is that? Diligence. What is that? The spirit of diligence. And then when the power, when the faith liberation hour began, teachings of the word of God, of faith, every blessed week. And you need to see in the book called the mandate, you will see the picture of the outside building, of the inside of the building where the faith liberation hour began few days after the vision was delivered. God was at work and God is still at work. But the spirit of diligence was driving him. That same spirit somebody must contact here today. And after the ministry was commissioned, immediately the office setting began. Ask me what they were doing in the office. Because every morning he will leave home and will not return till later in the day. No congregation. But the spirit of diligence was at war. In the same vein, you need to see, if you look at the book, the mandate as well, you will see the picture of the building where the first 
office was set up. And there, the, he will give everyone assignment. They will read, they will study, they will pray. What was at work? The spirit of diligence. What if he had received the vision and then went to bed and did nothing? Would we have been where we are today? No. There are many of us believers seated today under the sound of my voice. You have had great visitations from God. But lack of the oppression of the spirit of diligence has kept you at the same spot. But no more after today. Yeah. I've got good news for someone here today. That vision that God has delivered into your hands shall find fulfillment. Yeah. And that stagnation of your life and your destiny from today shall be finally over. Yeah. What is diligence? Very important. It is a spiritual virtue and a key ingredient required for success in life. What is diligence? It's a spiritual virtue and a key ingredient required for success in life. Diligence actually is the persistent the determined, the constant, and the earnest effort to complete an assignment. Diligence is the persistent, the determined, the constant, and the earnest effort to complete a task. And we can say very clearly from scriptures and all examples around us that diligence is a platform for excellence. Diligence is the platform for excellence. Excellence will remain a dream that never finds the light of the day until the spirit of diligence comes to play. But remember, excellence is your portion. And upon this mountain, everything contesting your excellence in Christ shall be permanently terminated. Yeah. Say with me, excellence is my portion. Say it again, excellence is my portion. The loudest you can, excellence is my portion. Bible speaking says in Proverbs chapter 6 beginning from verse 6 it says go to the ant and learn a lesson one of the things that the ant does is that the ant is very very diligent and if the ant can be diligent how much more we as believers in 1 Timothy chapter 5 and verse 6 the Bible declares that he that liveth in pleasure is dead why yet he leave it? Your business has been delivered to you by God, but until the spirit of excellence comes to play, the spirit of diligence comes to play, excellence never becomes a reality. There are many who are here today in businesses. I want to announce to you today, that after this spirit of diligence comes upon you in your businesses, you will become sought after. Yeah. In your career, you will become sought after. Yeah. Places where they've been telling you before, go, 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 we don't want to see you. They will be the one begging and running after you. Yeah. If that's for you, let your amen show it. who keep running up and down for example I want to be promoted in my place of work it's great for you to be promoted but how diligent are you at work if you are not diligent who wants to promote someone who is lazy at work nobody does but after this spirit of diligence come upon you today supernatural promotion 
speedy accomplishment will become the order of the day in your life. Say with me, I receive it. There are many families today who are filled with challenges and horrors and heartaches for lack of diligent dads and moms. The careless, they are slack over their fears of their homes. And so things go wayward and the enemy comes in and finds his way. But I've got good news for you today. After this spirit of diligence comes upon you, the devil will give up on your family. And as I speak right now, I don't know who I'm speaking to, but I have the prompting by the spirit of the Lord that homes and marriages and families are being restored right now. Every attack of the wicked against the prosperity of your home is here by cost. If you receive it, let me hear you shout the louder, amen. Without any doubt, laziness is a robber. And it's a spiritual robber, it's a robber of destiny. After the spirit of diligence comes upon you today, everything that the devil has stolen from you, he shall restore back seven folds. Everybody knows it. There is no lazy person can ever survive around Bishop Oyedeko. You cannot survive if you don't possess the spirit of diligence. Not in the office, not even at home, not even as a domestic staff. If you are lazy, you will not last around him. How much more? Those of us who are connected, because we are all members of the same family, how do we expect to survive in this ministry that carries this grace without possessing it? Today, your own portion, double of it, shall be delivered to you. Yeah. Say with me today. today. Say it again today. today. My own portion, My own and double of it, double. shall be delivered. Be shall the Lord amen if you believe that. Yeah. What are the characteristics, therefore, of diligence? One, you must understand that diligence is a choice. Diligence is a choice. The Bible says in Proverbs 22:29, "Seest thou a man diligent in his business? He shall not stand before me men, rather he will stand before kings. Diligent in his business. So diligence is a choice. It's not a gift. There's nothing like the gift of diligence. It is a choice. But it's the choice of the triumphant. And I see you triumphing from today in Jesus' name. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1. The Bible says, if you were hacking diligently. Hacking diligently. You know, the word of God is going on right now. The way you listen also shows your level of diligence. Are you listening diligently or carelessly? Are you focused with rapt attention or do you allow your thoughts to travel here and there? If you will hearken, listen diligently, the Bible says God will set you up on high. There is someone here, you have seen promotion in time past because God has blessed you. But after you return from Shiloh 2012, God will surprise you. Supernatural promotion will become the order of the day in your life. Say with me, I receive it. From the onset of this ministry, Promptness in all services has been the order of the day, for example. That is a choice 
for diligence. There were times at the onset when there would be three, four people in a service, in a prayer meeting. But if the service is set to start at 6 p.m., if it's only one person that is present, the service must start. How many of you have ever noticed that? Amen? And that has become our custom. It has become our trademark all across the nations of the earth. Promptness. Why? The grace, the spirit of diligence at work in this commission manifests all over the place. And that's why God keeps taking this ministry from one level to another. The spirit of diligence is available in their house. You are returning with your own passion today. <laughs> Number two, diligence is a commandment. God commands us to be diligent. Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 5. The Bible says to diligently take heed to God's commandment. So we are commanded to be diligent. 2 Corinthians 8, 7. We read at the answer just a while ago. We are told to abound in diligence. So diligence is a commandment. And remember 1 John 5, 3 and 4. If you obey God's commandment, he makes you a commander. I see many people return from Shiloh 2012 as commanders in life. <laughs> Number three, diligence is a seed. Genesis 8.22, while the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest shall not cease. When you sow the seed of diligence, you reap a harvest of what? Of diligence. It's a seed. When you sow it, you are bound to reap it. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 6 tells us, if you sow sparingly, how are you going to reap? And if you sow bountifully, how are you going to reap? Amen. So it is a seed. How you sow it determines how you reap it. I see this spirit of diligence come to play in every aspect of your life from today like never before. And of course, next we must understand diligence is a spirit. There is the spirit of diligence. There is a spirit called the spirit of diligence. In Mark chapter 1 verse 12, God's word states very clearly that the spirit driveth him. The spirit driveth him. And Zechariah chapter 4 and verse 6 tells us, not by power, nor by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. The spirit of diligence is available and we see that work in the life of the apostles Acts chapter 4 and verse 33 Acts 4 33 diligence is a spirit with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them diligence is a spirit and I see that spirit possess everyone upon this mountain Shiloh 2012 a double portion of it in the name of Jesus Christ yeah. and next you must understand that diligence drives its career diligence drives its career the spirit of diligence drives its career what does it drive its carrier to do? It drives its carrier to labor. It drives its carrier to labor. First Corinthians chapter 15 verse 10. Apostle Paul was speaking and he said, I am what I am by the grace of God. And then in the later part of that scripture, he says, but I labor more abundantly. Labor more abundantly. So when you possess the spirit of diligence, it drives you to labor. It takes away from you the spirit of laziness. 
I see that become someone's portion today. Amen. Judges chapter 6 and verse 14. I believe it was that spirit that came upon Gideon. And God, he was told, go in this thy might. The same way I see you returning from this Shiloh mountain in the might of the Lord upon your life. Go in this thy might. And so Gideon ended up doing exploits in life. As you return from this mountain, I see you beginning to do exploits. <laughs> Nehemiah chapter 4 and verse 6. The Bible tells us that the people had a mind to walk. Nehemiah 4, 6. The people had a mind to walk. So when you are possessed with the spirit of diligence, it drives you to labor, productive labor, labor that brings you to distinction, labor that elevates and lifts and promotes you. That will become your portion from this mountain in the name of Jesus Christ. Since the inception of this ministry, this spirit of diligence has been at work. You see pictures in the early days of the ministry. And you have plenty of those pictures in the book called The Mandate. Where God's servant was teaching. Now you see him today teach with all intensity and purpose. But it did not start today. It has always been like that from the beginning. Initially, I used to wonder, but it's now I understand much later that it's the spirit of diligence that keeps driving him and driving him and driving him under the butcher in Kaduna. In those days, you see him teaching with all intent and purpose, God's word with power, laying hands on people and sweating. And if you look in the congregation, how many were we? Some of those impartation services, we were not up to 20 people in attendance. But with all intensity, with all purpose, the spirit of diligence driving him to accomplish God's mission for his life and destiny. Here we are today. See what God is doing. And yet the best is yet to come. There is a place God is taking you to. The spirit of diligence will help you to get there. Laziness will not have access to your destiny. Say with me, I shall get there. Say it again, I shall get there. The loudest again, I shall get there. In those early days when he starts to teach the word of God, you will see sweat coming out of his three-piece suit. From the shirt coming out of the suit. And you look at the audience, how many were we? The ordinary man will be wondering, but why is this man screaming like this? And one day, in Cardinal, he told us, he said, don't you ever think, why is this man screaming like this he said i can see invisible crowd beyond those of you that are seated here right now inside i see them outside sitting listening to the word of god yes the auditorium then could sit only about 300 people look at from that place to where we are today from an auditorium Amen. From an auditorium whose capacity was about 300, God began to take the ministry through the spirit of diligence at work in his servant. One step after another, after another, from 20 to 100, and bit by bit, bit by bit, to thousands, bit by bit, to multiplied congregations. Here we are at Shiloh 2012. See what the Lord has done across the nations of the earth. 
after this spirit comes upon you, you will cease to be a local champion. There is somebody here between now and Shiloh 2013. God will announce you beyond your widest imagination. If you are one of them, let your amen show it. Like he told us several times, at the point God told him, get down to Lagos, rest me are people. And then the work in Lagos began. 1A, New Era Road. How many of you know where that place is? Many of us don't. You need to check out the pictures in the book, The Mandate. And then the work started again. You see him ministering the world with power, with authority, with all intent and purpose, with the spirit of diligence at work. Started again all over. And then from there, God began to multiply. And from there, we moved over to Raji Oba. That entire environment will never forget winners in their lifetime. You could see some of the seminars where people sat on the roof top of people's houses. How many of you know the place? Shout a loud glory. And then from there, Raji Oba, God moved us to this place where we are. Began with one service. And today, multiple services in faith tabernacle. God will multiply you. I said, God will multiply you. Say with me, God will multiply me. But for that to happen, the spirit of diligence must be at work. You must get it today. I said, you must get it today. And number six, finally, we must understand that the spirit of diligence carries definite rewards. It carries definite rewards. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 8. The Bible makes it very clear that in every labor, there is profit. Hebrews 11, 6. God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. It carries definite rewards. From this mountain, you shall not miss the reward of diligence. <laughs> Let's briefly take a look at dimensions of diligence. Dimensions of diligence. The first dimension of diligence you must understand has to do with our thoughts. Diligence affects our thoughts. In actual fact, it begins with your thoughts. So diligence goes beyond just running all around and sweating out physically. It begins with your thoughts. The top root of diligence is in your thoughts. Proverbs 4.23, the Bible says, Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Proverbs 21.5 the Bible talks about the thought of the diligent. The thoughts of the diligent. Proverbs 13, 4. So it's from the thoughts that it begins. If you are not diligent in your thinking, you cannot be diligent in other aspects of your life. Second dimension of diligence is in your words. And the things you say. Matthew chapter 12 and verse 34. The Bible makes it very clear. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So if you are diligent in your thoughts, it will reflect in the things you say and how you say them. Luke chapter 6 and verse 45. Out of the treasure of the heart, a man brings forth. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 7. It says to teach them diligently. When you listen to a man speak or to a woman speak, you will know whether he has the spirit of diligence at work or not. And you all are witnesses. Each time God servant stands here to speak the word of life, you can see the spirit of diligence at work. Today, you must collect your own double portion of it. 
And the third dimension of the spirit of diligence has to do with our actions. If you are diligent, you will be hard working. It will show in your actions. It will show in the things that you do. Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 24. It says the hand of the diligent shall bear rule. Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 3 makes the same thing clear to us. Nobody may see your thoughts, but we see your actions. So your actions shows how diligent you are. We are all here. At Shiloh 2012, for example, you've made a great choice to be present, either right here on Grand or in any of the centers connected across the globe. But how diligent are you actually hearkening? You know, even when you sit down, it shows how diligent you are. When you walk, diligence shows whether it's there or not. Upon this mountain, that spirit must come upon you. I know that many of us have copies of the new release manual for the ministry called The Mandate. Do you have a copy? Can I see your hands up? You have a copy? Wave your hands to the Lord if you have a copy. Praise God. If you don't, it's very important for you to make sure you get a copy of the mandate and go through it and you will see the spirit of diligence at work in this commission. The book demanded there were over 100 sessions of meetings before that book came out the way it is. What is that? The spirit of diligence. There are many hidden blessings in you that cannot come forth until the spirit of diligence comes upon you. That today, that spirit is coming upon you afresh. And you will become a show to your world. So with me, I receive it. All through scriptures, we have examples of men who possess the spirit of diligence. Father Abraham, you are all familiar with the story and you can read Genesis chapter 12 and Genesis chapter 13. Father Abraham was a hard worker. The spirit of diligence drove him until today. Even up till now, we keep singing, Abraham's blessings are mine. Your generations after you will remember you for good. How about Isaac? Another covenant father, he was a tireless worker. He had the spirit of diligence at work in him. Genesis chapter 26, beginning from verse 1. You can read that at your own time. A tireless worker, he tired out all the people that threatened him. And he ended up being distinguished. Whosoever might have been pursuing you to frustrate your destiny, as this spirit of diligence comes upon you today, they will give up. I see them giving up. In your career, I see them giving up. In your family life, I see them giving up. How about Jacob? Genesis chapter 30. Jacob was a creative worker. He made it and he was distinguished. Somebody here will be distinguished. In the Bible, we are told about the three wise men. In Matthew chapter 2, beginning from verse 1. They diligently sought Jesus until they found him. That was the spirit of diligence at work. You are here upon this mountain. As you diligently see God, you also will find him. Very interestingly, the Bible tells us about the Proverbs 31 woman. Distinguished woman. Woman of excellence, but not without diligence. For all the mothers and the ladies in the house today, I see the spirit of diligence coming upon you afresh, distinguishing you as a woman, as a wife, and as a mother. 
that spirit will take you higher than your peers. There are individuals 